Hello guys, Termex here, and welcome back to another New World video. I'm going to be going over my war, bow, and hatchet build setup. Now before I get into all the details about this, I do want to make one thing clear before I set any false expectations. A lot of the roles of a ranged DPS and a musket or a bow user in war is usually assigned to being on artillery, being on cannons, being on repeaters, all that kind of stuff. But this build is a little different. Your main purpose with this build is to force heals, actively debuff the other team's heals, and in general just be a nuisance to the other team, causing a bunch of AoE and damage over time effects and slowing down their army. And a lot of people aren't going to like this playstyle, I understand. A lot of people just love putting on heavy armor, putting on a war hammer, and pushing right into the fight. Some people love using a fire staff and an ice gauntlet. I, we're not going to make fun of those people. It, it does a lot of damage, even though it's very, very overpowered right now. But this build is for the people that love using bows in war, and they want to get the most out of it, and basically help their team out in the most that they can. This is probably the most secondary thing to a supportive role I could think of next to, of course, a healer. But you're going to be doing a lot for the team. You're going to be constantly making sure that their heals are limited. You're going to be doing damage over time and all that kind of fun stuff. Your main role is also going to be punishing the other team for grouping up because you have a lot of different abilities that could punish armies for grouping up. Like I said before, you're going to be using Rain of Arrows. You're going to be using Poison Shot. And all these things come in conjunction to just punishing the other army for staying in a group. But what do you do if the army isn't in a group? What if they're split all the time and you can't get the benefit out of any of these? Well, that's okay. Because this build also has a secondary action of taking out enemy backlines, taking people off of cannons, and in general, helping your team push the objective. I don't know why that guy hit me. Maybe he's mad at me. But, you know, Sherber, I hope you have a great day. And if you're watching this video, welcome to, uh... Welcome to YouTube, buddy. And he stood still. Okay. Now, as I'm going over all this, I will have two war footages in the background so you guys can see how this plays, how it performs. And both of these wars were just inevitably losses that we both ended up getting spawn trapped in. So these were not winning wars. These were not the best wars that they can be. But both wars, I still managed to get over half a million damage as a supportive role. And my main goal isn't even to kill enemies. It's just to help out the team and be supportive. And yet, I still got more damage than a lot of our DPS players. And I'm not going to point fingers at anyone, but I'm just trying to show the power that this build really has. But the first thing I do want to get into is the bow build. A lot of people have been asking, where's the bow build? Where's the bow build? This is the war bow build. I am going to have this build here, and I will have a separate PvE PvP bow build because they differ from each other. I have a lot of videos in the works right now, and I'm trying my best to get everything out. So if you are sticking around for the PvE PvP bow build, it is similar to this, but I will have that own thing posted very soon. Just stick around for that. But let's go over this. The first thing I do want to mention here is Rain of Arrows. This will shoot a barrage of arrows in a 7 meter cone that deal 150% of your weapon damage. And the further you go down, eventually you can cause a bleed, which deals 85% weapon damage. And this stacks up to 3 times, which is amazing. And then finally, if they are hit by Rain of Arrows, it causes a 15% slow for 4 seconds. Over into the Poison Shot ability, this will just basically leave a lingering poison cloud within an area. And if they go into that cloud, they will get 10% weapon damage dealt for the next 20 seconds, which is honestly amazing. And when you upgrade this, it goes up to 12% weapon damage for 20 seconds instead of 10%. It helps out a little bit. It's just good to have. And then finally, Direct Hit. If you directly hit someone with the Poison Shot, it deals 200% more damage. Now, a lot of people are confused about this. People think the arrow itself does more damage. People think the gas itself does more damage. I could assure you through testing, it is not the arrow itself. It is actually the lingering gas clouds. So you're technically doing 24% weapon damage per second for 20 seconds, which is pretty crazy. It's pretty insane. But the only condition is you have to have a direct hit. And I want to say the lingering cloud after this does not gain the 200% more damage effect. Only the target that you hit this shot with. So hit their tanks, hit their front lines, maybe even hit a healer with this so they're forced to heal themselves. And for our third ability, we got Penetrating Shot. Now Penetrating Shot is an arrow that deals 150% weapon damage and it passes through targets indefinitely for 100 meters. Now the upgrades we can get for this are Blood Soaked Arrow, so after each target it goes through it does 10% more damage up to 50% and finally we have deep strike penetrating shot now deals 20% more damage to targets that are 20 meters or more away which is actually really really nice now as for the little abilities in this tree we have evasive tactics so after we dodge we get 20% more damage for five seconds we also have dodge and weave so after a dodge we get 10% haste and now we have mark which is probably one of the 
best, best, best abilities in all of these trees. We deal 10% more damage to people that are already suffering from a debuff. So what you do, Reign of Arrows, make them bleed, make them slow. Anything else you do is going to do 10% more damage, which is awesome. And now, Battle Precision. This is amazing too. Debuff and damage over time durations last 20% longer. So all of our bleed, all of our slow, all of our toxin is going to last 20% longer. Now we do have AM True. I just love this because it benefits more from doing heavy attacks. So we get that 30% more damage and arrows fly faster when we do heavy attacks. And now we also have long range. This is a must with any bow build. This just makes us do 20% more damage when we're at least 10 meters away. And if you're using a bow, that's basically all the time. Now we have finishing shots. So if your target is below 50% health, you deal 20% more damage. Another amazing ability. The bow has a lot of great abilities. Now we have surprise attack, and this is if you haven't done damage in the last 10 seconds, your next attack deals 20% damage. And a lot of people are going to ask, does this work for rain arrows? Does this work for poison cloud? And it does. So instead of 150% weapon damage, you're going to do 170% weapon damage if you use your ability after that cooldown. Arrow range, this is just nice because it increases the distance before an arrow drops off by gravity by 100%. And then finally, we have Hawkeye. When you land a headshot, you heal yourself for 10% of your damage done. Honestly, I didn't know where else to put this. You could try Bullseye for the crit. You could try Opening Strike. But me personally, I just like getting a little bit of healing. And now for our hatchet setup, it is in basically all the throwing trees. So there's nothing I really have to tell you what to go for first. Everything here is great, but your main squeeze is going to be Infected Throw. Infected Throw allows you to throw an axe at diseases targets, and this disease reduces the target's healing efficiency by 30%. This applies to Life Staff, this applies to Life Steal abilities, this applies to getting healed by other teammates, and even drinking their own potions. And on top of that, you're also reducing that target's damage they're dealing by 10%, and the farther you go down, you could extend this duration to 8 seconds, and on top of that, you can make a lingering AoE cloud that affects multiple people at once. And now the other things aren't too much to, I guess, get excited over. You have social distancing, which is nice. It slows targets by 15% for 3 seconds. Rending throw is probably really good in a lot of situations. It basically reduces the target's damage absorption by 10% for 10 seconds. Very nice. You could also get this rend increase of 15% if you're farther than 8 meters, which is basically we're going to be farther than 8 meters all the time. Remember, the range game is your game, so make sure you're just staying at range, keeping your distance. And all these other throwing abilities aren't really necessary. If you really wanted to, You, I guess you can spec for infected throw, go into berserker to get the healing. But with this build, we are going to be running light armor. So let's go over to my armor category here. I am running full lights, and that's what you should be using when you're using this build. And a lot of people, a lot of people are going to say, why aren't you just using Undying Berserker on your hatchet? Why aren't you just using Berserker to get around faster? Me personally, if I'm running a range build, I don't want to warrant myself to push a group, especially with 6,000 health. I'm going to get three tapped in two seconds with light armor. So your goal is just stay alive, put up constant damage. I don't die a lot in these wars, and that's basically your main goal just looking into what we have here here is my bow and arrow it's only level 54 you don't need anything special but you do want dexterity rolls on your weapons alongside with my hatchets now the hatchet itself has dexterity rolls yes the hatchet benefits better from strength but i still want to be able to use the hatchet while maintaining a lot of damage so having that hatchet's utility on top of the 24 dex is pretty dang nice now over to my jewelry i just have dexterity rolls dexterity rolls and a constitution roll for a little bit of health because without this i would be sitting at 6200 which just isn't a lot and this helps me out quite a bit it's a little bit of health but i don't have to waste any of my points into my attributes to actually maintain this type of health now over into our gear we have 20 dexterity light boots we have 12 dexterity light pants we have 12 dexterity light gloves we also have 20 dexterity medium chest and we have a 20 dexterity medium head. Now, a lot of people are going to say, how do you have two pieces of medium gear, but you're still light? Well, I do want to explain this. Armor in this game does have a lot of different weight variations. This medium helmet for the Skinner hat is 1.5 pounds, but that's not always the case. Most traditional medium helmets are 2 to 3 pounds, and if I had that on, I would go over the 13 threshold as I'm at 12.7 right now. So if you do want to maintain medium head i recommend getting a skinner's helmet because skinner's helmets are always going to be below the weight limit so you could run another piece of medium gear without the need of being medium yourself because the dodging is going to be very vital as with the bow when you dodge you get that five seconds of in power allowing you to do 20 percent more damage 
And now I am going to be getting a lot of feedback on what kind of gems you should be using. In all honesty, if you're using the bow, I would recommend using a diamond as you're going to have more damage as long as you're at 100% health. But not everybody likes to do that. And not everybody maintains 100% health as it's war. You're going to be taking AoEs. You're going to be taking hits. So I like to personally run... I forgot what the name of this dang gem is, but it gives you Cruel 1. I'll probably put the name of the gem on screen or something. It's the green one that's not an emerald. It's the weird one that you have to pronounce. And this gem basically means you do plus 6% damage against targets with an active crowd control status effect, which is slow, stun, or root. And our crowd control is going to be slow from the Reign of Arrows. So this means we could Reign of Arrows and get 6% bonus damage from our bleed procs, which is honestly really cool. And for the hatchet, I did get a nice gem roll. I got this, I forgot where I got this hatchet from. I think it was from a certain dungeon. I'm pretty sure it was a dynasty dungeon. And this came with a gem that gives me plus 15% more damage while your stamina is not full. And range throwing hatchet benefits a lot from constantly dodging, which gives us that constant 15% damage. And we could just sit back, minimize their heals, rend the enemies, and slow them all down, which is all in all very great and now the last thing i want to go over is attributes because everybody's going to ask if i'm in war what attributes do i need with this build just spec full dexterity every single point you could put into dexterity pop that into dexterity because bow and arrow is the only only weapon that could benefit from dexterity bow and arrow is not in any other category can't be boosted in any other way so dexterity is your way to go and a lot of people are going to be asking, well, what armor should I be running in war? What armor is specific to my war build? Well, luckily, right after this video comes out, I'm going to have a full guide to what armor you should be wearing in war based on what weapons you're using. So this is the end of this video. Make sure you check out that video right after this if you have any more questions about that. I just don't want this video to be 30 minutes long because that's just way too much in my opinion. But that's the setup, guys. I hope you guys do enjoy this build. And good luck with your wars. I hope this helped you out get some sort of guidelines to what you should be doing as a ranged person. And like I said before, your goal is crowd control, punishing the enemies for grouping up, anti-healing their tanks, basically punishing the team for even wanting to group up in the first place. And I said it once and I'll say it again because a lot of people are going to say, why don't you just use Ice Gauntlet Fire Staff? You get way more damage and it's still range. Yes, indeed that is true. But honestly, I'm just, the whole meta right now is Ice Gauntlet Fire Staff. It's not new. It's not unique. This is something I rarely see and I would like to see this get shifted into the war meta because it's very powerful and it's basically helped me win a lot of wars regardless of the two terrible, you know, wars that we just had. That, that, that was a fluke. That was just a test run. But other than that, guys, it really means a lot that you stuck to the end of this video. Please make sure you guys leave a like on it if it did help you guys out. Make sure you guys subscribe so you never miss out on any of my new New World content. New New World content? You know what I mean. I hope you guys have a terrific day. You guys stay safe, and I will see you guys later.